presentation, writing, video, the visual arts, the vital discourse, the validity of production value in stage performance, the vibrancy of music when married to film. Tonight, we'll be talking about this and various other illuminating things while we go inside for our verbose, very much serious voyage into music television. A gift for you. Hey, I love gifts. It's our finest stool. Thanks. Greetings, friends, and welcome to the parlor. We can find salvation, take the light, and have your dreams come true. You know, assuming your dreams involve myself in an ill-fitting suit and Ray Wingnut pretending to be a barman. On that basis, we can't disappoint you. Coming up on tonight's show, we're going to be having a heated debate over marriage of music and visuals. Marriage of music and visuals, we're going to be talking about that <laughs> with Owen Kidney and Dan Staines from Slip Draft. Also on tonight's show, we will be having a performance previously filmed from the traditional band Skipper's Alley in the live milieu of Whelan's alongside an interview with Ray Wingnut. But to begin tonight's show, I was going to say, let's get cheering for Laura Sheeran, and then she reminded me, not only is that a terrible rhyme, but also she is called Laura X. So Laura X, fill a bus for Laura. Thank you. Thank you for being on the show, Laura. Thanks so much for asking me to come. As I was running up the stairs there, you were performing for our exquisite studio audience, and uh, you obviously have this uh, elaborate light setup, and that's all your own gear, that's all your own setup. Tell us yeah. about that. Um, well, I wanted to, okay, so I'm working on this new album for about two years now, and it's kind of coming ready now to a point where I can start performing the, some of the songs. And um, the album kind of started out as more of a visual project. Um, so I kind of was going filming things and I decided, I filmed random stuff for about a year and then decided some of the footage that I really liked that I'd write some songs kind of to soundtrack, yeah. to soundtrack the footage yeah. essentially and that's how I've written the album so it was kind of it started from a very visual point and so I thought when it comes to performing it needs to have a visual impact as well and I, d I didn't want like the idea of having just like the projection like the videos being projected while you're singing just seems seemed a bit sort of like flat or boring or something so I thought okay why not a bit of like flashy flash flash so <laughs> we'd learn we'd I, I play in a band called Nanu Nanu as well and we had been using lights for a while so we'd been kind of teaching ourselves how to use DMX controllers and how to program lights so then I just kind of decided to use that technology as well and in terms of uh, the new project you're going to be doing um, I guess you have videos for every every song on the album then yeah um like is that? I suppose from the get-go, you're very conscious of how you want to present things visually uh, mm -hmm. with any project. Um, so, what's the plan in terms of releasing them? Well, I guess um, I they've been after the initial video stuff, the clips and everything, and picking what I wanted to work with and everything. Then I started making some musical ideas, and then when I started developing musical ideas, then it made me think of more visual things. So then I'd start, okay, I'll develop it in this way. So they've been both kind of informing each other simultaneously. And now it's at a point where the songs are nearly finished, and I guess I just need to finish editing the video and decide whether I want all of them to be up and made public, or whether I just want to put up my favorite ones, or I don't know yet. So it's still kind of a work in progress at this point. Do you worry about neglecting one side of things if you're taking, you know, complete control of the lights, complete control of the videos, yeah. and that kind of thing? Uh, <laughs> yeah, is it totally. a worry that you're, you know, not serving the song? Yeah, it is. Um, but I think at a point, um, well, where I'm at now, I'm just kind of hurtling full speed in all directions. Um, but I have seen over the past two years, like, a, a strong development. And you do learn a lot by just throwing yourself in the deep end of every aspect. And I think now, at this point, if I would have been put off by the idea of neglecting music and maybe put off the idea of doing video for that reason, I would be so far behind in terms of what I can do now, you know? So like, you just need to keep going and work as hard as you can. And um, as long as you're committed and you're working hard, then you're just doing your best. That's all you can do, so yeah. Cool. It's good to scare yourself, you know? Yeah. Um, tell us about the track you're going to perform for us now, Sapphire Eyes. Right? Sapphire Eyes, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> um, we're going to, we, oh my God, I have to get out of that habit. I've been saying that for like uh, however many years now. So yeah, I am going to do a song now called Sapphire Eyes. And um, yeah, we'll, let's, 
Let's do it. We, we Let don't. it happen. Okay. Total buzz for Great. Laura. Our eyes. We'll have more from Laura later on the show, so stay tuned for that. You know, don't fuck with the frequency or signal of your television or internet connection. Just generally, I, I would advise that. <laughs> anyway, music and visuals, visuals and music. On stage or screen, there's a careful consideration to be made in connecting the two, but conveniently, stand next to me are two men who know all about that. They are On Kidney and Dan Staines. Thanks very much for being on the show, guys. Cool. Uh, tell us, Dan, first off about Slipdraft and your current work with them, how that's evolved. Uh, yeah, well, basically it's a, we're a group of, of six artists um, who came together kind of originally um, 
working and kind of uh, creating visuals for, for shows, live shows. Uh, and then over the years, we kind of experimented with uh, projection and projection mapping and different types of kind of uh, visual technologies. And um, yeah, try, I suppose trying to create something kind of slightly unusual and different than, than uh, yeah, different than maybe traditional shows. And for yourself, on you've worked with both live visuals and then music videos as well. Is there a different negotiation made for the two? Do you have to get in a different headspace? Yeah, like music videos can be more like short films or you, you've a lot kind of wider. Well, I don't know, it's hard to say. I mean, performance uh, uh, stuff, like performance video or whatever, I'd like, I started calling live visuals performance videos because it's like about somebody behind the audience that also, uh, can almost be like a musician that would be like, hitting buttons at the same time to the music because a musician might end up doing something you know during the set and you have to like adjust it for that so you have to be like part of the performance uh, so that's how I look at it like it's a performance but if you're making like linear work like something that's you know a few minutes long and it's going on the internet going on TV or whatever that's different because you can think about it a lot more you know and you can if you don't like how it's going, you can change it. And sure, and you can get a bit more precious in that respect, maybe, yeah. um, when you have a bit more time. Do you both get like a buzz off the, the instantaneous nature, the spontaneity of doing stuff live in that way? Dan? Absolutely, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's just interesting because I suppose you're, you're surprising yourself almost. Uh, you're creating something yeah, off, completely off the cuff and, and um, yeah, inspired obviously by what, what's being played at that moment or, or whatever. But, um, yeah, it's interesting, and it's. It, I suppose it's great because it can always be frustrating coming to the end of, of a, a, a music video project or something like that. You're trying to make sure that everything's perfect. Well, uh, when you know when doing it on the fly, it, it's really it's happening. You know, you have no control. And what would be the uh, I suppose the, the dialogue you have with people when they first approach you that that collaborative process? Because you're taking their ideas and you're trying to, you know, obviously put yourself into it as well. Yeah, w we did a lot of work with Caribou and. We did two like visuals for two of his tours, and he came to us with. Um, he didn't like the the uh, like collaboration is a really interesting thing. Like it, it the conversation can be uh, abstract, you know. And the more abstract the conversation is, maybe the more creative it can be. The more space you're giving to people to like come up with their own stuff. Like um, Caribou, he gave us a DVD of Sunra. Just Sunra. Yeah. He does like a really experimental famous experimental jazz. Experimental jazz, like a d documentary about Sunra. No, a documentary that was made in like the sixties or seventies. Of Sunra in his gaff in America, like like talking about he's from Mars or whatever. He's like, I've been sent from Mars to like share j space jazz with the people. We were like sitting watching this, going like, what? Like, <laughs> but we ended up like just doing like crazy shit, or whatever. But it was it was a good direction, you yeah. know, by him or whatever. The, the stimulus worked, it didn't matter how abstract. It definitely worked, yeah, yeah, it definitely. It was, and funny fact, it was Four Tets DVD that he lent us, and we were like, it's Four Tets <laughs> fucking DVD. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were that, geeking out. Uh, it's good, it's good to geek out. Um, with Slip Draft, what goes into the, the construction of your, your stage design and stuff like that? Is that a, quite a laborious process? Yeah, I mean, we're at the stage, uh, like, between kind of the different the members of our group, we have kind of uh, some who are animators, say, or, or lighting designers, and then other people who involve literally about building construction of, of stages. And I mean, that kind of, the different aspects of that is, is, is highly interesting, just seeing kind of, you know, we design something wild on the computer and then they have to go off and, and come up with how you can actually physically construct it, so. So again, it's collaboration. It's Collaborate. Kind of dialogue. Yeah, yeah, collaboration, yeah, um, absolutely. And for your cell phone, like with a music video, when are you satisfied with the piece? When do you feel like you've reached an end goal with it? Did well, you, you don't, I guess you've time to do it, but like, you know, you don't, you never finish anything, you just run out of time. Let's talk about the future. Uh -huh. Let's look into our collective glass onions. What do you think is going to happen in, in the realms of uh, live performance with visuals and indeed music videos? Because music videos, it seems like there's, there's less of a focus on them, they're less important than they were, as you said. Um, where do you think things will go in the future? Um, yeah, I mean, there's tons of things. Uh, I like with music videos. I think there'll always need to be like some kind of video content because I think musicians need video content to share. Like YouTube is like the number one uh, music discovery platform. You know, beyond radio, beyond anything now, it's been like that for the past year or two. So musicians will always need video, and they'll need, you know, they'll need easy ways to do it and stuff. But like, uh, but in regards to what where the innovation is. Um, 
That's a different question. I think that, the, you know, I th well, virtual reality, I'm trying to do stuff in virtual reality. I think that's kind of innovative. Like, you know, there's music videos being made for virtual reality for the Oculus Rift and stuff now. So when that comes out in January, that's going to be interesting to be put on a helmet and then, you know, somebody has created another world, you know, yeah. and then you're like, whoa, you know, like that kind of stuff would be really interesting. There's already, if you know anybody with an Oculus Rift, like there's definitely like really interesting things going on in that sphere. Okay. So a helmet based future is what you see. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, like you put on headphones, you're it's like a, you're got, you're becoming insular and you you know what I mean? Like or you're reading a book, you're like shooting out the world. So why not put on a helmet and then experience doing, you know, that's all. Cool. Um, Dan, for, for yourself, I suppose from the outside looking in, I, I think that there, there is a lot of uh, collaboration involved. There's a lot of work and planning that has to go into what you do. What would be your advice for anybody you know, interested in upping their game in terms of live visuals? Um, I suppose it's just it's just about looking at kind of the technologies that are available like at the moment and, and trying to find kind of interesting ways you can kind of subvert those technologies to create something that's new and fresh. I mean, um, kind of the way I see visuals going in, in the future for, for shows or especially for festivals and things is I think that really has to become more kind of a, of an experience for the audience. It can't just be you walk into a venue and you look at a stage and there's something pretty on the stage. It's got to be that the experience or the whatever the illusion or the, the world that you're trying to create has to kind of surround the audience. Yeah. Well, we appreciate your insights. Thank you very much. Get a round of applause now at this point. Now, for something ever so slightly different, we have a traditional Dublin seven-piece band called Skipper's Alley. Performing in Wheelands, speaking to Ray. How's it going, Wingnut? Have a look. How's it going? My name is Ray Wingnut, and I'm here with Skipper's Alley, MacDara, and John. Lads, thanks for joining me. No problem. How's life? How are you keeping? Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah? Yeah, getting excited now. Big downstairs, you know <laughs> No, but, but t tell us about uh, some of the people that uh, that make up the band. Because I was I was looking at you there, and I was like, I was the first time that I've encountered you know this evening, and I was kind of thinking, oh, how does this crew get together? No, like, are they academic dudes, or are they just like lads, for, like buddies from school, or what's what's the, what's the story? But introduce the band first of all, and how did you all start playing together? Yes, how we met, I suppose, it's just just the general trad scene, you know. Like, there's no there's no unifying thing apart from trad. You know, within Trad is... We would never be friends if we yeah, were not Trad. Yeah, you know, we would hate each other, like, <laughs> if, if we were, if, yeah. So, it's just, you know, your parents get you into Trad, or however you get you, get into Trad, you grow up and you meet these people with different interests through Trad, and you just, the only thing that bonds you is Trad, you know? Yeah. Usually, like, not, I mean, like... It's a very, it's a very unifying thing, like, you know, yeah. massively diverse backgrounds and things like that, you know, different kind of political views and all, all the rest and the, yeah. the only thing, like I say, unifying is, is Irish music. I t like, so let's say all these characters come together to form this band, right? And one thing I'm really interested in is like you said that there's five members from Dublin or f mm -hmm. yeah, there's five members, members from Dublin and there's two from, one is from County Clare yeah. mm -hmm. and the other is from Monaghan. Monaghan. Mm -hmm. So how does that, do, do all these different approaches complement each other really easily or is there different approaches to it and stuff like that or to say hey let's form a band? Yeah well I don't know I, I often think of Skipper's Alley like uh, seven bickering siblings you know yeah. and, and that definitely brings a lot to it I mean like every time we we'll put together a piece of music there are arguments out the arse you know about something but it, but it means that the material gets it goes through a screening process you know and to the point not, not necessarily to appease everybody but we know that because someone will have a problem with something everything gets a second look, if that makes any sense. I suppose it's in the way we arrange the music uh, that that's unifying, I suppose. You know, I mean, we have all these different tunes and different styles within the band, but then the overall arrangements, like the, is, is the kind of like the stamp, you know, that the Skipper's Alley stamp, you know, it's just. Mm -hmm. The group found, like he found kind of relative success, I suppose, pretty early in, in terms of like he came together to play at the, that festival, yeah. and you, you ended up, you know, bringing the trophy home or whatever. You were saying you played in Berlin, and uh, where else did you, did you play? All over the UK, and uh, yeah. did you go to the States as well? Did you? We haven't been to the Not States, States no. yet. No, no. But um, like, yeah, it's been great. You know, we've just, you know it's been busy. Like we did, I've, I've, I've not done this kind of thing before. You know, um, you know, when you turn, it's just. It seemed to me like when we were in Berlin, anyway, it was just constantly, we were on the go, constantly, constantly, constantly. You know, and. Uh, 
fairly wore, wore ourselves out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but I mean, uh, you, you'd say, I mean, people, people abroad, especially in Germany or France, for example, they like Irish music and they're, they're really I'm mad about it. it. Absolutely mad about it. It's ridiculous, actually. They love it. They, they seem to like it more than Irish people do sometimes, <laughs> you know. That's probably something that, that, the, that the Irish people don't have as openly anyway, you know, an, an appreciation for it. And I think if you're only exposure to it is Temple Bar, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe you would be ashamed yeah. of it. But, uh, yeah, people abroad. Love but, it. I mean, let, let's say, like, you talk about, like, the experience of, of live sessions and stuff like that. And you said that, you, like, your natural home is just on a session in, in what kind of place? Like, the cobblestone yeah, and yeah, stuff like that? Yeah, you know, we live there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah so. every night. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's a nice place. And uh, and I mean, did you say that's your natural home? That's your natural environment for playing and stuff like that. But now, let's say when the band goes out on tour, you have these set gigs. You know what I mean? Where you're up on a stage and it's it's uh, like it, how how different is that vibe of let's say sitting around with people that you know in your home, the cobblestone or something like that, and then having a set gig on a stage in Queens. Sort of, well, I, mean, I, think, I think the scenes are so totally different. The, the 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 concert scene and the session scene. I mean, I think if you walk into the cobblestone, you have people playing absolutely beautiful, lively music, just life and you know love coming out of it. But they're sitting very still. Do you know what I mean? They have, a, they have a very serious expression on their face. Whereas I think the uh, concert scene is a very, very performance based, you know what I mean? Very kind of outward and everything. And I think for us. It's very difficult to the transition. Yeah. Very difficult. Really? You know, like when we're, like, we don't really know how to hold ourselves <laughs> on stage. We're like, oh, well, we didn't, or probably still don't. Stand there like fucking ages, you know? <laughs> so you're trying to introduce stuff. One, la one of the lads, in, he's not here. One of the lads in the band so uh, in like. particular. Uh, <laughs> Chap, he's, he's not sure whether he's from Connemara or Dublin, but uh, <laughs> like trying to introduce stuff. This guy has to scratch his head. Well, I'm, I'm going to play a tune, no, I sing a song. Yeah. Uh, and now, and he goes on for ages like this. And just <laughs> cries he's going to watch this, John. To be fair to Owen, though, right, is, is that, <laughs> that he, he obviously comes from, from a background where that kind of thing isn't. Allowed, but that's what I'm even. Yeah, no, 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 no. That's what I mean. It's, it's, it's a transition. That's, yeah, where it's, it's, it's when a, we all come out with these values where we're trying to be. That's saying I'd be any better. Like, <laughs> well, we come, we come to these values where, like, you know, especially with a French crowd, they want you to speak really clearly because they can't understand you, and they want you to have all the swagger, and it's just not something that comes naturally to us. I mean, we try, we we, we yeah. try, but uh, yeah. That's just very hard to understand, kind of Mara, whether we're speaking <laughs> about the German like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, but yeah, listen, that's, that's absolutely brilliant. You know what I mean? And I'm thrilled to have this opportunity to meet you and encounter you anyway. Um, and uh, no yeah, really looking forward to the gig and thanks a million for talking to thanks us. Very much. Thanks very much. All right, great stuff. Thanks. <laughs> thanks very much. stuff. Skipper's Alley, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool Good kids. Lads. Yeah, really, uh, just brilliant lads, so talented. You know, these lads on tin whistles and flutes and stuff, when they're, when they're warming up, you're just absorbed by them. They're just amazing, really amazing young fellas. And uh, yeah, and really great lads to interview. You know, 
very of the like traditional music makes a traditional interview in the sense of no ego, totally straight down the line, and just amazing talent and musicianship. Yeah, really brilliant. Skipper Zali, cool. Uh, we're gonna have another performance from Laura in a moment's time. Also, uh, there's this thing, the World Wide Web. Um, this guy Tim Berners Lee kind of really pushed it in the '80s, and now um, the Parlor actually has a World Wide website, so you can you can surf the web. That's the technical term, and you can surf towards our address www.theparlor.tv, where you can see a bonus performance that won't be on tonight's show from Laura, but. Thankfully, we're all going to enjoy that now. We're going to enjoy a performance from Laura and Fool of Bus. Thank you. This song is called I See Prophecies. Thank <laughs> you. 